All right, in this video, we're going to tackle one of the more complex but super powerful components of Caldera, and that's spot color editing. And it's something that we need to do on a regular basis, so we'll, let's get into it a little bit more. So we drag a file into our printer module, and we have selected our resolution and media and everything that we need to do in order for that to be sent to the printer in the way that we want for color management and resolution and such. Um, we've learned in previous videos that we can make adjustments to the image within colors and we have the ability to adjust globally, but normally that's not what we need for most customers. Normally what we're looking for is a spot color edit. 90% um, of the image is fine, it's just one specific color uh, needs a tweak. So like other rips, we have the ability to edit our spot colors. And this is the spot color tab that's accessed uh, on the bottom row of the printer module. When that opens, we have a lot of different components available to us, and it depends on what you have selected in order to determine what you see. So if you select on a specific spot color, we go to details, we can see that it's been found in the Pantone solid coded library version two, it has a reference lab value of that, which is normal, that's fine. And it's using the output profile, which is the fine art acrylic first surface to create these CMYK values to give us a color match. Now obviously it has to be converted to LEB to CMYK to print on your output device. The software has done a calculation and said that the Delta E is 2.6 as a color match for this particular output. Some colors are extremely close, such as this cool gray 2.6 is a 0.1. That's a perfect match. Generally, anything between a 0 and a 1 is almost a, a perfect match. Our eye would be really challenged to see a difference. But as you start to move up into the 2s, the 3s, and certainly the 8s, as you can see, we're starting to see a larger discrepancy between what was asked for and what we're going to get on the final print. A general rule again, zero to one is perfect. A zero to a three is generally very acceptable. Now, some colors will show a, a stronger difference at a lower delta, like pastels and light colors may show a variation at a two and a three where a dark color might need a four or a five. So it's a very general rule, but around a three is where customers might say, yeah, that's not quite as close as I'd like it. Can you do better? So there's a lot of different ways that you can edit this color. You can go in and just make an adjustment to it. You know, the customer says, listen, I want it to be a little more orange. Obviously it doesn't, this output device does not have the color capabilities to print that orange because it doesn't have an orange ink. So we have to mix things, magenta and yellow specifically. So we can increase the magenta, which is gonna make it a little more orangey. Um, but again, it's gonna be dark. And if we bring that back, we're gonna go towards magenta. And if we increase that, we're gonna move towards yellow. So the customer may say, you know what, that's a more pleasing orange compared to the default. Oops, sorry about that. Um, if I go to apply rules, that takes us back to the default. It sort of applies all the default rules that are for this, no custom adjustments. So we can go back up, we can increase the orange, for example, and increase the yellow. Yeah, it's gonna give it more saturation and vibrancy. It's still not a perfect match, but the customer may prefer that. So we could be done, we could close this, and we could hit print. But what if we want to save that edit for a, a future uh, time? So there's two ways we can do this. We can save it as a permanent change for this particular resolution. And the way that uh, Caldera does this is something called the dynamic library. So if we click on this icon in here, we can then bring it into what's called a dynamic color, a diamond, dynamic library, and this Pantone orange, and we say new, oops, pardon me, cancel, we say save, is now part of the dynamic library. Now a dynamic library means specifically for that resolution, for that uh, media setup and that mode, it will then make that change, okay? So to watch what happens when I switch to quality. It goes back to the regular one. If I come back to fine art, it automatically finds it in the dynamic library. We go back to quality. 
it's found it and computed by lab. So you can look down here and see how it's being calculated. If we go back to fine art and you see it's found in the dynamic library and it's doing this change, it means that anytime it sees Pantone hexachrome orange is going to make that adjustment. That could be great because all of your customers like that change, but what happens if this is just a specific customer that you wanna make that change for? So let's go in and let's get rid of that edit just to, to clean things up a little bit. And we'll say cancel and we'll say apply rules. Now we're back to defaults again, right? Everything is kind of back to where we were. So we're gonna make this change. Let's say 100, I don't think I want 100, maybe 85 and 100, okay? And this time, um, we're going to give it a custom name. And we're going to call it customer X. So you give it a customer name and we could say save. As you can see now, we have customer X loaded in here. So that's going to print this way. But if we were to reset this back and let's say we're opening this job a week from now and we want to reprint this for the customer, it's not automatically going to pick it up because it hasn't found Pantone Orange. It has found Pantone Orange, but it, it didn't find the customer name. We need to load it for this customer. So we come into here, come into there and say select. Now we've loaded that customer's custom calibration for that. So there's a, two different ways you can do it. But in both cases, they are connected to the resolution of that media, the resolution and everything that. If you go into quality and we try to go to hex or orange, we go to open, there's nothing in there because that dynamic library doesn't have that color correction. You need to make the correction in each resolution, okay? So those are the, that's the main way that we make color corrections. Um, generally, as I say, we go back to apply rules, hexachrome orange, we make our changes, da da da, and we save it and we load it.